farmers sow the seeds of the nation's commodity crops each spring, but ground also is broken in commemoration of National Arbor Day. The eco-friendly observance began in 1872 as the brainchild of the third U.S. Secretary of Agriculture and former Nebraska Territorial Governor J. Sterling Morton. An estimated one million trees were planted in the Cornhusker State in Arbor Day's inaugural year. And the movement has since spread across the nation and the world. I think J. Sterling Morton would, uh, would love seeing a place like this. First, he'd be blown away by the greenhouse. The Arbor Day Foundation carries on its mission of planting, nurturing, and celebrating trees by utilizing Morton's original 320-acre estate in Nebraska City. Every year, the foundation sends approximately 8 million physical trees to their 1 million dues-paying members across the country, with roughly 3.5 million seedlings alone coming from Arbor Day Farm. Adam Howard, the farm's director of mission engagement, says the foliage philosophy of Arbor Day's founder was an offshoot of a historic paradigm. At a time when trees were being used for fuel, for fencing, he really turned that on its head and he created that ideal that trees are great for shade, trees are great for aesthetics, trees are great for beauty. And I think we, we take that on as a foundation and, and really pass that torch well. Morton's 52-room mansion architecturally inspired by the White House, is a centerpiece of the Arbor Lodge State Historical Park and Arboretum. Staff often wear period clothing for tours and special events. Lodge coordinator Laura Steinman says the local topography was an eye-opener for the Morton family, who relocated from Illinois. When they settled in Nebraska, they were amazed at how few trees there were. Just along the creeks and riverbeds are some that people had maybe transplanted. It was mostly a prairie. So they set about themselves planting trees along their land. Through trial and error, arborists observe what could grow and survive in this area of the Great Plains. In turn, their pioneering efforts inspired Dr. Charles Edwin Bessey, a botanist with the University of Nebraska, to join forces with the burgeoning U.S. Forest Service. Together, they successfully petitioned President Teddy Roosevelt early in the 20th century to set aside half a million Nebraska acres as tree planting forest reserves. Bessie envisioned a forest in the state's Sandhills region serving as a fuel and construction source for railroads and homesteaders. It's one giant experiment is what it ends up being. Originally known as the Dismal River Forest Reserve, the Bessie Ranger District of the Nebraska National Forest covers over 90,000 acres and, according to USDA, is the largest hand-planted forest in the Western Hemisphere. But nursery manager Richard Gilbert says even with a population bump following 1904's Kincaid Act, which offered the state's western public lands free to settlers, some early hopes failed to blossom. The goal was to have this as the wood products and harvest it, and that really never worked out. Um, what did work out is the nursery, and they started supplying seedlings to all of the Kincaders that were coming across. The trees were free, and then in the 20s, they started the Clark McNary Act. And once they did that, we started selling seedlings to the state. That's where the nursery has continued, in that direction with those habitat plantings, the wind breaks, uh, and then on top of that, also supplying seedlings to the U.S. Forest Service. On that part of it, it was a huge success. Over 50 different species of trees and shrubs are grown on site. Bessie Nursery currently churns out 2.5 million bare root conifer and hardwood seedlings per year for state conservation and natural resource districts, though they're capable of producing nearly twice that amount. The state-level programs have cost-sharing plans funded by the Farm Bill, which help landowners plant trees to prevent soil erosion or create windbreaks for buildings and livestock herds. Here at Bessie, we've got the 76 acres, 46 of it is irrigated, and you know we've got the Ogallala Aquifer right here. And that was one of the reasons they put it, the nursery here was because of the plentiful water and the sandy soil. You know, for a bare root crop, you can get seedlings out of here very easily. Central to the mission of federal nurseries like Bessie is maintaining and replenishing the nation's forested areas. 
The Forest Service breaks the country into nine regions. Each is served by one of six federal nurseries. Bessie is the first and oldest of its kind and serves the Rocky Mountain region, also known as Region 2, which includes Nebraska, Kansas, and majority parts of Colorado, South Dakota, and Wyoming. USDA requires its nurseries to have a 10-year seed plan for catastrophes like extreme weather events, wildfires, and invasive insect infestations. The adults came in, started a gallery where they laid eggs, and here's two adult beetles. Cones and seeds are collected in all the areas served by the Forest Service and sent to nursery seed banks. Bessie holds over 14,000 pounds of conifer seeds for Region 2. And nursery management there says between 700,000 and 1 million container seedlings are raised in greenhouses to restock compromised regional timber each year. So we've got a really nice fibrous root system here. What we do is we just use mother nature to help us put them to sleep. And then we can extract them, put them in the boxes, and we run them into a freezer. And they just think it's winter. And then we can load them on the truck, frozen, ship them out to the ranger district. They thaw them out, plant them, and they think it's spring. That's it. Over the course of the past 140 years, the benefits of planting trees has grown beyond Morton's original vision. Today, environmental advocates point to the benefits of trees in the battle against greenhouse gas emissions. Critics have questioned the exact figures, but proponents estimate Bessie Nursery seedlings and nearby Ranger District timber can absorb, on average, between three and 4,000 tons of carbon dioxide annually. And in Nebraska, the state from which J. Sterling Morton and Charles Bessie's respective visions branched out, arborists believe the clear path to a sustainable planet takes root one tree at a time. For Market to Market, I'm Josh Bittner.